Okay, so I'll explain a bit about the uh, data hacking that uh, has occurred in Wikipedia, and I'll first go through it historically. And the first, uh, the most historic and famous example is this thing called Rambot. Uh, and just very quickly, Rambot was the first ever like automatic uh, hack of Wikipedia, and it started in 2002. And basically, what it did is it would go, it took U.S. census data and it made a Wikipedia page for every U.S. Uh, um, like locale for every city. And it created like 200,000 articles, which like more than doubled Wikipedia at that time. It made it look really encyclopedic, but it was just sort of a done bot, like sort of running off the uh, census data. Uh, and there was basically like, it never required any permission, somebody just sort of ran it at that point. Um, and since then, um, things have gotten a lot worse. So Wikipedia has this rule called ignore all rules. It's actually like a pillar. Um, but since then, it's sort of become calcified. Are you, yeah, so we're in the calc so we'll talk about cal you know, calcification and how uh, so, so right now in Wikipedia, you need to, in order to like get a lot of things done, like it's very easy to pull information from there, but we also want to talk about pushing information back. So like to hacking, taking information away, you know, transforming it and then pushing it back in some way. Uh, that's a lot more difficult, and now we need to go through a lot of bureaucracy. So um, everybody has trouble with this. Like regardless of basically how much experience you have, like it's always really difficult to like convince some part of the community to like uh, have recycled data back in. Okay, so not I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, since we're in Germany, instead of Hansel and Gretel, I'm going to call it Haskell and Gretel for the uh, geeks in the audience. Okay, so let's go on a magical adventure of Hansel and Gretel with data. So in in uh, Haskell and Gretel or Hansel and Gretel, there was the rural hunger problems. Uh, and in Wikidata and the Wikipedia world, that's like kind of like the, the data problems we're having where we couldn't like share data in between <coughs> two different things. So this, this was the problem, that, that people were hungry and like there wasn't enough coordination. Uh, and in Hansel and Gretel, they're uh, sent to the forest alone uh, to be abandoned, essentially. And in Wikidata, the information, oh sorry, in Wikipedia right now, the information is like abandoned basically in these templates. So this you have this sort of like template marker, and it's a text-based one, and it's uh, that works, but it's kind of like difficult because the data is kind of lost in terms of searchability. Uh, in the story, uh, ha Haskell and Gretel uh, invent a successful bread crumb system to get home. And uh, with, with, uh, with the comments did that, uh, well, the Wikimedia landscape did this for images because they made a Wikimedia Commons which allowed data to, uh, images to be shared between projects. Um, but the breadcrumb system didn't always work, uh, as we saw in Haskell and Gretel, uh, because uh, sometimes it was, the bread was, was eaten by different things. Um, and so this actually doesn't work for, uh, right now there wasn't a, a way to share data in between different things. So we still have this data problem. Um, but then we come across the magical gingerbread house in the story, and um, the magic, this is our magical data store called Wikidata, which uh, Brian talked about in the previous uh, section, so I won't go into too much data, too much analysis of it. Um, you can look at his slides if you want to know more about Wikidata and semantic there. Um, so it's going to give us the into Wikidata sharing, and you get some extra treats uh, with it. Um, and the extra, these are like the licorice, if you like licorice, and so like in Hansel and Gretel, it's Haskell and Gretel, there's like many different things. Uh, different uh, sweeties, uh, and so we have semantic triples available in Wikidata, and some of our other suites are qualifiers, so like you can have um, a semantic triple that tells you about the validity of your triple in a certain way, uh, and then we can also have these things called rankings, so different uh, wikis can like uh, disagree or like choose different, uh, different values. But I'm not going to go too far into this at the moment. So. Uh, in the, in the Haskell and Gretel story, the people get they get really hungry and eat the root. And so when Wikidata came out, um, the, we, every, there was a lot of bot people that started like importing all the uh, info boxes into uh, Wikidata, and they're just like really really hungrily. Uh, and so much so that uh, the people from the Wikidata team sent all the bot owners. It was kind of a joke. They sent us to this essay on Wikipedia, which if you want you can read called "There Is a Deadline," because. Like we were like basically overloading the server by like trying to push all the data in there quickly. They told us to like chill out and like start throttling. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so at the moment Wikidata, the story of Wikidata is like people are very hungry uh, because we're importing a lot of stuff from Wikipedia uh, and we're importing stuff from foreign databases, which I'll get into in a minute. And then 
then people are also adding stuff manually by hand. So now we come across the evil witch, right? Okay. So, okay. So in the there's an evil. It's a it's a tarp, as you can know. Um, and the evil data witches want to keep the like information like controlled in a central data point. Central data point. Uh, <coughs> Greta has a cunning defeat of the witch, if you remember the story. And the way that this is defeated is basically by using foreign data keys, so a unique identifier um, <laughs> on, on the head. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, Brian talked about this uh, about having these identifiers in, in, in across these things. So uh, Greta defeats the witch. So now. Um, all the um, wikis can transclude um, the wiki data. So this is the, uh, the solution, and this is like the, the, the champion of the thing. Um, and the important part is to remember for our presentation is that citations can be used as semantic data. So that's the last bit I want to leave you off with. Cool. So uh, what we're working on is trying to signal when a work is open access on Wikipedia. Open access by definition means it has a certain license, it's available freely to be repurposed and reused uh, for an academic peer reviewed work. Um, so, we're organizing out of a wiki project, a self organized community on Wikipedia. We you know, have supported many other users who have signed up and participated in this project. Um, and for us, the problem is that signaling actually that the work is open access is pretty hard. How do you really tell people do we use an icon? Do we you know, have to come up with some kind of imagery? For this, and we realized we came to the solution that really signaling clearly directly to the data itself is the best solution, is the best path. What is the license? Where is the source content? Where are the source images? Where is the metadata for my reference? And how do I get to it? How do I link to it? So that's sort of the direction that we've taken. This is kind of a, a bad resolution version of, uh, of an example, but you can see if I took this giant fish image from a, uh, an academic paper, which this actually came from an academic paper published recently. Uh, and if I wanted to set it in a Wikipedia article, uh, I could. And uh, what, we're, what we're working on is to actually add these signals in the reference alongside the end of the reference. So you can see right here it says CC, maybe you can see this uh, CC0 license. So that's mocking the public domain, a dedication to the public domain in a sense, uh, a link to the full text on wiki source. So you actually read Media Wiki marked up uh, text and link into it, link into each paragraph, for example, if you're citing just one section. Uh, so the media itself, like this image, being stored on Wikimedia Commons, and the other images that might be in there. Maybe there's better images that you want to use in your article. Uh, and finally, an entry in Wikidata for the metadata reference, which is sort of a, an interesting opportunity. So, so how are we how are we doing this exactly? So we're, we're taking all this open access data, we already know this is available, and we're importing it first to Wikisource, next into Wikimedia Commons, all the images, all the videos, and all the media. Then, the, and adding an entry into Wikidata for the metadata for the actual reference to be saved and then displayed. Uh, and finally, these signals insert in each of the Wikipedia article where the work is being cited, either previously or at the time of citation, basically as soon as it's been cited uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, and, and that includes the license itself. And you can see, as we mentioned before, like for each step, what we have to do is go to the community that we're looking to you know, automatically import data to and have a discussion and work within the constraints nature and the culture of that community to, to figure out, uh, to fit into the narrative of what they're doing and to meet, and to meet everyone's needs and to then actually get permission to build consensus. So where does this, this sort of project uh, single open access fit in the larger narrative of uh, the Wikimedia movement? Well, there's a long-standing problem here that we're just getting to touch on that is really exciting in a lot of ways. Uh, managing citations has always been hard. It's been a problem that's never really been sufficiently solved and it's been many attempts on Wikipedia in particular. So for instance, you know, some, some templates are used to sort of generate uh, references, not standard. Some categories are used sometimes to signal how uh, that a reference, uh, uh, that a work is being referred to. Uh, even in, in the French Wikipedia, actually, uh, names, an entire namespace is dedicated for references, but it's not very easy to use and it's not very popular. There's even a project that was proposed Wiki Scholar uh, to make a new project like Wikidata that would just be for references that didn't get enough community and foundation support to happen. And we even have an open prospect with the new visual editor, so an editor that's kind of a graphic interface to edit Wikipedia, um, that might be able to sort of touch on this problem as well, but there's still nothing that's fitting. So, so for us, what we see sort of the opportunities or things we get to poke at are uh, trying to improve the citation management experience as well as the quality. So by inserting into uh, Wikidata uh, the actual references, 
uh, we have a, you know, a chance to, to, um, to just manage them, to have community control over the quality of that data. Uh, and then uh, additionally, um, to be able to uh, put this data where it belongs, to have a location, as I mentioned in front of Wikipedia, you have folks the name space to try to manage references. And everyone's sort of guessing at where we should put this data, and it isn't a location, we need to really forge that and end it in this discussion so we have some place to move on top of it. And we can give you a chance to put the Wikidia in, so maybe Wikidia is a place, maybe that's where references need to go. Um, uh, we have, as I mentioned before, we have a chance to link more deeply into the open access literature itself. So you can link to an individual paragraph or a section, uh, and that can give you a better uh, ability to, to, to go in reverse and see where, where folks are actually pointing the work, um, when it's cited on Wikipedia, as well as taking a snapshot of that source. So at the time that it's uploaded into Wikisource, we see how that article was when it was cited, and not how it's been updated or changed by the publisher or whoever later. Um, and then finally, uh, sort of an opportunity to practice automation, but using this least common denominator of web, uh, web data, uh, which is that the community can override, you can manually edit these data entries, any user can do that, even anonymously. So this is sort of a, a, a great thing, an opportunity to work within that constraint of also being uh, within human judgment. So we wanted to give some pointers and some paths, and sort of some lessons that we're learning, and we encourage other folks to, to practice. As you maybe want to touch or think so, you know, there might be some opportunities to work with uh, Wikimedia projects. So one is, yeah, reputation does matter. You don't have to have like a really balloon reputation, but the simple things matter. Create a user account, you know, make some edits. Edit Wikipedia, maybe you see some of the other projects, see if they're interesting to you and can contribute. And this goes a long way in discussing with editors later, especially when you're asking to automatically edit uh, many articles. Um, additionally, be aware of cultural protocol touch base and actually read about how that particular language or that project works and uh, try to work within those constraints because they're all different. Um, look at what has been done before. There's a lot of places, there's a lot of work that's been contributed. Your, your project idea might have been touched on multiple times in the past before you come to it. So, so give that a pass and see if you can fit what you're doing into a larger narrative about you know, these problems. And that's sort of what we're doing now in terms of reference management. This is a long-standing problem that's never been solved and it's really a pain and it costs time, editor time to manage this problem. Uh, and then finally, reach out to the community, on wiki, off wiki, especially IRC and the you know, they're there for a reason, and they really do help, uh, and it's, it's worth uh, remembering that you're not alone, that there's other people who maybe even want to work on your project. So now I'll take some questions. Yes. I was wondering if you could expand a little bit on the snapshotting idea. Uh, I'm thinking now just of, you know, pure link references in Wikipedia. It'll say accessed on, but as far as I know, there's no snapshot. So are you building essentially an archive of the internet, or how do, what do you... That would be a big task. <laughs> Somebody else is working on that, I believe. Uh, where's the kit? I'll archive the whole, you know. But, um, <laughs> but, like it's, but it's, it is really upsetting when you go to click on a link and it's dead, right? And so, but at least in this way, like, you, the, the, ones, the, parts of Wiki, the parts of the internet that are cited and open access, those cannot die because we will be supporting them ourselves. So we'll prevent link rot at least in the, in the most important ways and in the ways possible, essentially. So is that a partnership with open access journals where you are sort of a, a service for archiving their content? What's nice about open access journals is that you know, they're committed to making their resources available for anyone to repurpose and reuse. We don't have to ask permission. Right, right, but it's interesting that it sounds like you are planning to archive them all. No, only the ones that are cited by Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay, so not the bad ones, but... <laughs> <laughs> Whichever ones are cited. Hopefully the bad ones are cited too, you know, as an example, <laughs> where the things go wrong. Uh, so, wonderful talk. Um, I'm, uh, I'm running a project to mine the whole scientific literature for facts, and I'm interested, how interested are you in um, mind facts driving Wikipedia. You talked about, um, you know, the uh, demographics which you put into that. So, for example, if we come up with uh, facts for each species, are you interested in capturing that as a primary driver? I, 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 what's something really interesting that I asked in the last kind of talk about Wikidata is that, like, there are some typical queries are like, um, you know, which is this, which cities have, you know, mayors, you know, that have over 100,000 people, but I think some of the more interesting ones are the less obvious queries, which is like, 
which sources do I have to believe in order to believe so and so fact? And so it would be nice to see like which uh, journals would I have to believe in in order to believe X this uh, you know uh, Iranian Wikipedia or like Farsi Wikipedia versus English Wikipedia or something like that. So it doesn't. I think that having those facts in mind will be useful because it will say like you will be able to know what you believe in or like what you have to believe in in order to believe your knowledge set. Kind of. I think it's a good point. I encourage everyone, you know, if you're interested in the long-term opportunities of data from Wikimedia projects, be involved with Wikidata. Now is a chance to inform what data is being stored and how it's going to be stored in the future and what we're designing for. Uh, and then where the foundation puts, puts money. So please, please participate. That's where we can sort of shape what happens. Uh, so just related to the uh, previous question, uh, the, the process that you're running it, it's triggered by a citation. So you see a new citation in um, Wikipedia, and then you build all of the rich information around that citation. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you, yeah. you can either trigger it by entering a DOI on the web, or we, we're just also constantly watching for new citations on Wikipedia. So yeah, we, we pull those as well. So I uh, am starting a new structured data, open data kind of uh, repository. It's about um, choices people made, including like choices to download apps or choices to move to cities, what they hope to get out of it, and, and how it worked out. Um, so it's kind of the product of the space. And I'm curious if you have, if you think that there's a way that I can interact with the uh, Wikimedia community to get like uh, support around that. It's just so difficult. Like I've done it three times. One is like to get three separate bots, and basically like two of them have been unsuccessful. And like those were the what times when I had more experience. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's really difficult. Basically, like the thing that you want to do is there are, like you want to rally support, and then because there's going to be a big discussion, and then you want people to like show support like early and early on. So you kind of have to have some back end discussions, which are like very discouraged. Um, but that's what, how it's done anyway, so you kind of have to do canvassing illegally um, if you want to, to run. And even then, but like even if you do the, like the tricky thing, like there are still going to be a, uh, some people that will like uh, will, that are just like uh, ideologues that that will like uh, will, will show their opinion and uh, like they can be blocking because you're already running consensus. The whole thing on consensus, and everybody is acting in good faith and everybody is doing the best they can and what they want for the project. And it's just difficult, but, but there are some like standard ways to do it. Okay, I'll ask you more. Okay. Yeah, just a quick question. Is there a database dump available of all these citations? Um, yeah. So like a three big file that has title authors, um, wiki source links, etc., etc., in one place, because that would be very consumable. We're planning to expose all the data we have. Yeah. At the moment, you, we can, and it's on GitHub. There's uh, I'm running something that will show which uh, Wikipedia articles cite which journals, or like cite have which like uh, open access citations. So I have that at the moment, just like the, those connections. Okay, hopefully in the future, this data lives in Wikipedia. Yeah, in the future, it'll be queryable, and we'll not have to run as a process. So, but it is accessible right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I've, I've written a blog about this. There's sort of three standard ways to do it. One is to like just use a bot and like get what you need over the network. Uh, the other way, and that's also useful if you want to write back to it. And the other the other ways um, basically involve uh, RDF dumps, or if you want to do them, but that you can't do certain queries in that way. And if you really want to have full control, there's a Java library called Wikidata Toolkit, which I've written some demos of as well. And basically, you write. Uh, you get a you get a Wikidata page in, in Java, and then you can write a callback that like runs over every page. So there's a Java application that allows you to do whatever you like with it as well, and that's the most powerful. I'll give you stuff there. And then there is lunch downstairs. Thank you.